The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Once again, stars Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson. Salma Hayek gets a much bigger role this time around. And Antonio Banderas is here to destroy Europe. I went to the theaters tonight. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Michael Bryce is now an unlicensed bodyguard and very sad about that. And when he runs into Darius and Sonya Kincaid once again, he's driven over the edge by their collective insanity. I thought the first film was fine. I'm surprised there's a sequel, but obviously when there's success and you have A-list stars, there's going to be more. This movie is exactly what you would expect it to be. It's another one. I don't know. <laughs> But like a lot of sequels, you can tell the film exists because they're trying to make more money. More than likely, if a studio came to the people who make these movies and said, we'd like you to make another Hitman's Bodyguard movie, they'd just say, okay, let's do it. Whereas if you go to say like John Krasinski and say, I want to make Quiet Place 3, he's probably going to say, well, give me a while to see if it's even worth it because I want to see if I can make a good movie or a film that's at least as good or better. There are sequels and then there are sequels. The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard is a sequel. It's just a movie where people run around and <laughs> Antonio Banderas is literally trying to upload a virus to destroy Europe. <laughs> but I will say there is a place for films like this. I mean, I really enjoyed going to the theater tonight and I enjoyed mindlessly watching a film that was incredibly stupid and very, very lame quite often. And if you're going on a date to this movie, you'll probably have a good time. You'll forget about it instantaneously when you guys go out to dinner afterwards, and it won't even register in your brain, but you at least escaped from the reality of the real world for maybe 90 minutes. And that's where these movies exist. Hitman's wife's bodyguard has aspirations to do nothing else but that. And in that way, the film is a success, but in virtually every other way, it's it's kind of a colossal failure. The script is incredibly stupid. Uh, the plot makes no sense at all. It's, it's very difficult to follow. Antonio Banderas and his luscious voice is basically just there to say random evil things and occasionally threaten people. Samuel L. Jackson is very much so on vacation and... <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is a very likable actor, and he does what he does very well in this movie. I would say Salma Hayek does the most interesting stuff, actually, in the film. I, I liked her quite a bit. She's very violent and angry. She curses more than Samuel L. Jackson in the movie, which is a major thing to say. And I would say she's the reason to see the movie if you ever do decide to see the movie. That being said, it's very clear that in post, they either rework things around plot-wise or they realize they didn't address the plot enough because there is so much ADR in the middle of action sequences. Sometimes you can even tell that the characters aren't saying what you're hearing them say just by the way their lips move, but there's a lot of cutaways to helicopters or car chases or motorcycles or whatever, and you'll hear them blurting out lines that are important plot elements. Like Frank Grillo just says, Antonio Banderas is uploading the virus right now to Europe. He's gonna destroy Europe. And it's he's not even on screen saying that, but. It's just like a reminder to us. Things like that happen in the movies all the time, and it's not worth mentioning because of how common it is unless it happens like a dozen times or more like in this movie. This movie also falls into that trap of having characters that are con artists, but not really knowing how to present that in an intriguing way. They'll just have characters make insanely dramatic shifts from scene to scene. And it's a very cheap way of writing a con artist character. You just establish them as one thing in a scene, the next scene there's something completely else, and there's no nuance to it. You can tell the people who made this movie had certain priorities. Plot and character probably wasn't really one of them. Catering to its A-list stars, that was probably pretty high on their list. Still, despite its incredible stupidity, the movie has a few entertaining sequences, especially early on, establishing Ryan Reynolds' character as someone who no longer wants to be involved in bodyguarding. He doesn't want to touch guns. He just wants to carry pepper spray. He doesn't want to be involved in any of this anymore, and so that creates some tension. We've seen this done before in movies where you have characters who are known for kind of being a badass who are like, no, I'm not going to touch guns anymore. Uh, the Rock and The Rundown, for instance, which, side note, The Rundown, or Welcome to the Jungle, as it is known in some other places, is fucking awesome and you should watch it. But still, the movie has a pace to it and it's very watchable. It's almost calculated in that they know the story and the script can only hold so much weight. So they have to make it so fast-paced that you don't have time to register how inane everything is. 
And that's basically probably what they're going to do going forward because I can tell they definitely want to make a third one and they might. I don't know what they'll title that one, but eventually it'll just be this really long title with a bunch of apostrophes. I'm gonna give the hitman's wife's bodyguard a C minus. This is probably like the most positive spun negative review I've ever done because I went into the movie knowing exactly what I was going to get and it gave it to me. I left the theater going, yeah, that was what I thought it would be. Never once was bothered by the movie, but I couldn't help but notice just, it's kind of bad. It's just kind of a bad movie, but you know, it is what it is. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching, but I also wanna give a big thank you to the sponsor for this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons and a class project. Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and skill level, Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule. Some classes I would highly recommend are Artivism, Create Inspiring Art for Change, taught by Nicholas Smith, and Portrait Photography, Shoot and Edit Instagram-Worthy Shots, taught by Jessica Kobisi. The best thing about Skillshare is that you're learning from people who are out there doing it every single day. This is very important to them, and you can tell every time you watch their classes. That's coming through every time they try to teach you. They're passionate and energetic about what they're teaching, which is very motivating. The first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a free premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So please do check out that link in the description below. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and thank you guys so much, as always, for watching. If you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.